All right, welcome back for part four of the inventory tutorial series. So the main thing of this part will be to show you how to implement the inventory module in your game. I took the 2D isometric demo from Godot to implement the inventory system in it. I added some interactable objects so you can walk to them and pick them up. So the iron sword and here I have a crystal. And I added interactable chest, so you can open them and you have your items. They are basically the chest button I had before. That's something new. I will do a refactor of the inventory manager. And also I will be changing the resolution of the game so it can fit any resolution. So if I go out of the full screen now, if I close that, yeah, you can scale your window any way you want. It should fit any resolution. Let's jump right in. So I'll start where I left off in the last part, part three. I'll start by fixing a few things. So let's change the resolution. So if I go in my project, project settings, the display window, I'll reset those to the original size. And then at the bottom, I'll change the aspect to expand. So that means that if I start the game, the content of the game will fit the screen. But yeah, I need to change my anchor point and a few other things. The settings will be in the top right. I'll place the chest in the lower left, bottom left. Simply move them a bit. They're not completely in the corner. And in the last video, I said that for a control to scale from a point, it was the anchor point, but that's not the case. It's the pivot point. So if you want this hotbar to scale from the bottom center, it's this small cross here that you need to change. You can change it with this option at the top, or if you want more precise control, you can simply go in the inspector tab in the rec and there's pivot offset. What I do is get the X 126 and I divide it by two. For the Y it's 32 and my scaling point will be at the bottom. And then there's the split stack window. If I go in it, since it was anchored to the center, it didn't scale. So let's make it full rect and then change the pivot to the center. So let's go to the rec pivot offset. It is gonna be 1024 divided by two. And the Y is going to be 300 divided by two. And it's going to be in the center. Good. And now when we start the game, everything should stay where they are. When I change the resolution of the window. And if I change the scale, like the hotbar scales from the center. And let's see if the split stack stays in the center. Yeah. I'm going to add more range to the scale and add some labels to show what's the possible value. So let's go in settings. Copy that one. Duplicate. Scale it down. Minimum value. I'm going to set those labels from the, the code. Center left, move, hold, shift, stay on the same axis, line right, max. So my H slider, I'm going to set the max value of 3.5. Yeah, in my code, I'm going to get a reference to the two new labels. So the minimum and the maximum. Duplicate that minimum as a label and duplicate that and label max. Let's set those. Label min, label max. So when you start the game, the label will be set label minimum text is equal to minimum. And then here I'll use the percentage sign and string. So that's going to transform what comes after the percentage sign to a string. What I want is the scale slider dot min value. Since this is a integer, I don't have to transform it to a string. This will deal with it. And if you have multiple inside the string, you have to enclose this into an array. So then you could have multiple stuff and they would be placed in order in which they appear in the string. That's a pretty cool trick. All right. And then the next one, duplicate that one, control D max. So now we should see this in the game. Start. Yeah. And now settings, minimum, maximum. You could also set what's your current scale at the top, maybe. That's up to you. Okay, so next is going to be some changes in draggable control. Now that we can change the size of the window, we need to set it not only at ready, but every time the window is changed. So what we'll do here is the screen size. We only need it when we set the position. So we can remove it from here and put it right there. And since it's only used there and not anywhere else, uh, I can remove it from the top here. Screen size, remove that. So here, var, screen size is equal to that, and that's it. If you don't do that, when you change the scale of your screen to be higher than what's in the project settings, the window will be blocked. You won't be able to go further. This 
I'm not sure why it's commented, but it, it shouldn't be. This is when you change the scale, it will make sure that the windows are still inside the screen. So you can't lose them. So the next thing is this function here at the bottom on GUI input. This function can be simplified a lot. What I'm going to change is in the ready, instead of connecting to GUI input, I'm just going to remove that. And here, I'm just going to say GUI input. And that's already a built-in function and it will listen to any input. So then let's make more place. Let's add the new code here. And all of this will be removed. So if event is input event mouse button so if it's a click and the event dot button index is the button that means you clicked on the control what we'll do is do the offset let's bring this offset up we'll set it to dragging depending on if the event has been pressed event dot pressed oh and this is not mouse position this is going to be event dot global position and then we'll raise that and that's pretty much the new code all the rest is not needed so in theory, when you click, well, it's going to check if it's the left button, then the dragging will be true. The offset will be set with the position you click. It will raise the window. Then when you release the button, it will go in. It will set the offset again, but that's not a problem. Then the dragging will be off, so it will stop dragging. The other thing is, instead of using process here, we'll use input and we use the event. If we are dragging, then we'll get the event position minus the offset function ready. What I'll do is get viewport and then we'll connect to size changed. The function will be on self and the function will be on size changed. Let's get this function, make some place here, function on size changed. And what we'll do inside here is the same as set scale, set position with the rec position. Save that and that should work. So if I put my inventory on the side here and move the, move the window, stays there and we'll also add here if event is input event mouse motion and drag so if you drag something and do other input at the same time it will only pick up the mouse motion next thing to fix is going to be the scale control so here what i want to add is something to make sure that the pivot point that we set earlier is always at the same place if i go in my split stack now the pivot point is in the center but if i would scale the window the pivot always stays at the same place because if I start the game and change the scale, then split something, then change the resolution of the screen, it's moving around. That's not what I want. I want it to stay always in the center. So in my scale control, let's make sure the pivot stays at the same place. Let's connect to a signal, resize. Let's set it on self and let's make it on resize. Perfect. So we'll need the current size of the window. So let's set it on ready. Current size is equal to get viewport rec. And we want the size of this. The new function is uh, on resize. So let's pick this one up. And what we'll do here is we'll get the new size is equal to the same thing. So get viewport rec dot size. And then we'll get the pivot ratio since our pivot is in the center of the screen. Uh, the, the ratio should be 0 0.5 since we divided by two. For the hotbar, the X was half, but the Y was the same of the height. So they should stay relative to where you set them. To do that, we simply do a rule of three. So rec pivot offset divided by the current size. And we multiply that by the new size getting our pivot, dividing it by what the current size is, then multiplying it by the new size will give us the position of the pivot. So we can set it right away. Rec pivot offset is equal to that. And then we can set the new current size. Current size is the new size. Save that. So if we try that, if I increase my scale and try to split something, my split is in the center. If I change the size, it stays in the center, no matter what the resolution is. That's perfect. And now there's more to fix. If you scale your, your UI, the item info is pretty small. And when you pick up an item, it becomes super tiny. So to change the size of the item, let's go in the main scene. And in my main scene right there, the item in hand will be a scalable control. So scale, scale control, let's put that script on it. And the item info, let's go in. Instead of extending nine patch rec, it will extend scale control. 
we need to take into consideration the scale. This one here, the rec size, we need to multiply that by the current scale. So multiply by settings manager dot scale. Save this. And we'll need to do the same for the item in hand in inventory manager in the input function. This here needs to be divided by the scale. So divide that by settings manager dot scale there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the small fixes I wanted to do. Now I'm going to show you how to add the inventory into your game and add some functionality to it, interact with your world, pick up item from the ground and everything. And to do so, I'm going to use the 2D isometric demo from the Godot asset store. Before going there, I'm going to do a small cleanup in the main resource, the icon and default environment. I don't need that, so let's remove those. And the equipment. GD will go in inventory. So I only have my chest and random chest here. Save that. I'm going to create a new project and import my folder from here in the new one. So what I'll do is right click here, open in file manager, and I'll have my folder here. I'm going to start a new project now. So when you open Godot in the main menu, there's the asset library project here. And what I'm going to use is 2D isometric demo. So if you have your game, it should be pretty similar. So click on that. And it's simply a small isometric tile map with a small troll to control. Download that, create a file name. All right, uh, create the folder and install and edit. All right, so we're in. The first thing is I'm going to change the GLES2 for GLES3. Yes, yeah, save and restart. So the resource, we have the dungeon and the tile map, the troll. All right. Now I'll take my folder where all my inventory is. I'll pick only the file in my other project and bring those in here. Now I'm going to import it everything. So if you start the game, you start in the dungeon, but then we want to have the UI. So in my scene folder, open my main, that's my UI. Let's apply the layout, the layout I like to use. So default layout, I have mine saved, Kalam. So I have my scene on this side and the folder on this side. So in my game node here, I want the dungeon. So let's go back in the main, bring dungeon inside game. There you go. Then project, project settings, uh, we'll change the run. Instead of starting with dungeon, I'm going to start with scenes and main. Then the input map, I need to add the hotbar actions. So I added the hotbar actions. Uh, you can add the key to it, but I will come back to the hotbar later, upgrade it. Mostly when I'm going to do the usable item and auto load, we need to add all of our managers that we need. So managers, we need the item manager, add, we need the resource manager, we need the settings manager, and we need the signal manager. All right. So then we should be able to start the game. So we can move. We have access to our inventory. The random chest all works and we can pick the stuff and equip them. The scale should work. Yes. All right, so now I think we can start adding the interactable objects. So I'll start with the floor item. So I'm going to create a folder, new folder, interactables. And inside here, I'm going to create a new scene floor item. OK, this is going to be a 2D scene. The first node, I'm going to change the type for a area, area 2D. So that's going to be my floor item. All right, so it's, it's going to need a collision, collision shape. Let's pick a circle. All right, let's zoom in. And I'm going to import an image. So I got the small bag. Let's import preset 2D pixels so it's not blurry. All right. Now that I have my image, I'm going to create sprite and set it to it. And I'm going to move a bit the bag so it's kind of in the center and the collision. So it's the bottom of the bag. That should be pretty good. And the floor item, the collision here, it's going to be mask. For, well, I'm going to say that the layer four is going to be for the interactable. So I want him to be collidable with the others, but I don't want him to collide with anything. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Now it's time to add the script to this one Floor item area 2D create. So let's say that we want to be able to place it on the ground and that it has an item already in it. So we'll export a string for the ID of the item item ID and the other things will be the item itself, which is a type item. Since this is going to be an interactable, I want the action that will be displayed when we move near it. So action is going to be pickup. I want the name to the object name. 
for now we don't know, but ready could set it. Ready. So if the item is null, then we want to create it based on the item ID. So item is equal to item manager, uh, get item, and we'll give it the ID item. So that will create an item and set it. Then we can set the object name to the item name. When the player wants to interact with the item, when he press the key to interact with it, we'll need a function for that. So any object that will have this interact function will be interactable, basically. Then if the player interacts with this floor item, we'll call the signal manager, emit the signal, item picked. Then we'll send the item of this floor item. We'll send also the floor item itself. Then who's going to listen to that? It's the item manager. And if the item manager accept the item, if there is space in the inventory to, to pick it up, then it will call another function here to tell it, okay, I picked up the item. So do, do what you want to do with, with that information. So function item picked. And the only thing we'll do here is remove the bag from the world Q free. And that's pretty much it for the script for the floor item. Now we need to add this item picked to the signal manager. Do this, go in signal manager. I'll add something here, interactables, and I'll have signal item picked. And here I'm going to add the arguments in those signal here simply to know what I'm going to pass. So if I come back later, I'll know what each signal is sending. So this one is the item and the sender who's sending this signal. The inventory open, I'm sending the inventory itself. The inventory ready is the same. So let's do this. UI scale change is sending the value of the scale. So set it. So now we can send the signal item pick. We need to make sure that the inventory manager listen to it. Inventory manager ready. Let's add signal manager connect item picked self and the same thing on item picked. Let's add this function. Oh, now Godot is telling me that I have a problem here. I simply close it and restart it. Godot and now it's it's okay. I think it's because I imported all my stuff and it was a bit overwhelmed by everything. So just restarting Godot, remove that. So if I keep going down a function or item picked. So this is the item and sender. Let's make a bit more place. So when you pick an item, you basically want to put the item in your player's inventory. So we'll have to get a reference to those. Let's go and get them. At the top here, I have inventories. I'm going to duplicate that and do player, player inventories, the player inventory container, player inventory that. So this one, this is the basically the window where all of the players inventory are and we'll get those. And when it's ready, we'll send it through the signal the same way we do with inventory here. When the inventory is ready, we send it. But then when the player's inventories are ready, we'll send them. So the inventory manager knows where to put the item. So floor inventories is equal to. We'll start with the equipment. The order in which you send them is the order in which the item will be placed in the inventory. So if you want the item to be equipped first, then you send the equipment first. If you want the item to go in the inventory and then maybe equip them, send those here. Inventory left, inventory right, signal, manager, emit signal, player, inventory, ready. And we'll send the inventory. Let's create this signal in the signal manager. There, inventory, signal, and this will be the player's inventory. So now inventory manager that we have that, we can listen to it. Let's duplicate this one. Player inventory ready on player inventory ready. Let's create this function. Put it there. Function on player inventory ready. Inventories. And then set those. Player inventories is equal to RNT. That's pretty much it. That's it. Now, when you pick the item, we want to put it inside here. For I, for each inventory in player inventories. Since this is an array, we'll get the inventory object here. So we'll do I dot add item. Now uh, later I'm going to refactor a bit the, the code in here because we need to know if it's possible to add the item. So just for now, just to test, I'm going to pretend that it worked. So I'll do sender dot item pick and then return. Now here, if you have maybe a NPC that has an interactable function and he send a on item pick, he tries to give an item to the player, then he would be the sender. Maybe you could send true or false or something like that. And depending on the success of the picking of the item, so he can say different text or keep the item until you have space in your inventory. All right, so now we should be able to pick the item and put it in our inventory, but we need a way to 
interact with the item, to know that we can interact with the item. So on the player, which is the troll here, I'm going to have to add a interactable zone. Anything in that zone will be interactable. So the only thing I'm going to add is an area 2D. I'm going to give it a collision vision shape 2D. This one, I'm going to give it a capsule shape. I'm going to rotate it. So if I press E, rotate with control, then Q to pick my mouse back. And let's scale that a bit. Let's say that this is pretty good. Let's rename that in interactable zone. And now I'm going to add a label over the head of the player to show that he can interact. So I'm going to add a child node V box container. Let's make it large and let's make it center and move it up. Let's add child node a label. I'm going to have two labels. The first one will be the action control D and the other one will be the object name. This one will say press E to action. The other one will be object name. Make them align center. I'm going to apply the font. Let's go in my font. Let's duplicate this one. Let's do 12. Yeah, double click on it. Settings. Well, let's see how it looks. If I put it on action, theme override font, I could make it bigger. Maybe the object name could be 12. You can play around with that if you if you'd like. So this could be used for any interaction in your game. If you have a button that you want to press. So I'm going to add a script to this one. Let's call those interactable labels. Let's add a script, create this one. I could make it extend the scale control. So it will scale if you use change the scale. Export, node path, one ready, var, the action label, label action. That's going to be a node as label. Duplicate that label name. That's it. I can save. I can set those already. So interactable label, label action, label name. It's done. Go back. So the only function I'm going to have here is display. Let's set the action label action tech is equal to price e to do the action which i'm gonna get from the function it has an argument the action and the object name and let's duplicate that label name is going to be equal simply to the object name now show then we need to go in the player let's go in the troll and add the function so you can show or hide the text and detect if you are colliding with a interactable I'm going to have to get the reference to interact zone and the interact label. Set those here. So I can set the labels to a control and this will be an area. Area 2D. I can save and set them right away so I don't forget. Interact zone and interact labels. Right. I'm going to keep here a variable which is the current interactable that we're seeing. Current interactable to check if there's an interactable in our area. I'm going to check for that in the process. I could do it with the interact zone here and node area entered or area exited but the thing with that is if you have multiple bags under you and you pick one then the area entered will not be called for the others so you won't be able to pick them up you will have to move out and move in again so that's why i'm doing it in the process i'm not going to use a delta so let's use an underscore so it's not giving me a warning so the thing here is if not current interactable if i'm not currently looking at something then i'm going to try to pick one so let's see if i am overlapping anything our overlapping area is equal to the interact zone dot get overlapping area but first we we have set the interactable zone inspector collision layer four. So earlier the the bag, the floor item was mask four. Now we need to set the layer to four to see it. Oh, and while we're here, the interact labels, since we made them scalable, we should not forget about the pivot point. Just here, rec pivot offset. Let's set it half two zero four divided by two. And the Y is 25 should scale from the top of the head. Now we need to make sure that the area that we're colliding with is an interactable and if we have anything. So if overlapping area size is greater than zero, we have something and let's pick the first one. So overlapping areas and first one and we'll check if it has method interact. If it does, current interactable is equal to the, the, the first one. This is the first overlapping area. And then we can display the labels. So interact labels display well here in theory we should be able to only send the current interactable yeah let's change that so we'll send only the current interactable and if we go back to our labels here we'll get the interactable and every interactable should have their action set and their object name set so get them from here
That's good. And then this will only display the text. So if we want to pick the object, we'll have to get input from the player. So function input will pass for now, but we need to add a new action. Let's go in project, project settings, input map, and let's add interact. Add that. I'll do the key E. Okay. Close. So that's it. If event is action press interact, and we have something to interact with current interactable dot interact. That's it. Now we should be able to pick it up. And there is simply one last thing. If we go out, out of the zone we need to stop showing the text and this one i'm only going to use the interactable zone uh, node on area exited double click that control yes connect so, so we'll check if if the current interactable is this area that means it's the same one so we can hide everything interact labels and hide and current interactable is no so we should be able to test that so first i'm gonna hide the interactable labels so we don't see it when we start the game and let's go in the dungeon and add some floor items so dungeon i'm gonna go in the walls where the player is i'm gonna find some floor item tstn drag that in put it in the corner here floor item inspector do a gold coin okay duplicate that let's create another one which is a helmet oh there we have two items let's just do a small change in the inventory slot for testing later we'll come back to change a bit more let's make the set item a setter set get set item in here i'm gonna have a variable to know if the slot is ready so false and on ready ready is true then in set item if ready then i'm gonna add child item container let's add child item that should be good let's save and now let's test so we are in the game let's move to a bag and we can see that press e to pick up helmets e i got my helmet now the thing is if i pick up the gold coin it's it's placing it in the chest place if i pick it up now i can't put it back because it's not supposed to go there uh, but that's because the validation is only when you click so now that's what we're gonna refactor so change the responsibility to validating the item that we're placing in instead of being the inventory manager it's going to be the slot itself so in the inventory manager the on gui input slot this is where we check for the equipment slot and if it's not valid we return when you place something in it and everything now this whole thing well, maybe 80% of that will go to the slot itself. The only thing that we need here is the item in hand to show it over everything in the UI. So let's start. I wanted to add for the splitting of the item. If the stack is only two item, well, it should simply split them in two, one, one, instead of asking for the quantity. So if slot dot item dot quantity is equal to two, then don't ask. Just unstack splitted, uh, send in which slot is being split and the, the new quantity, which is going to be one, can't really change that. Else you show it there. Now this part here, I'm going to start by taking all of this, copying it, and I'm going to bring that to the inventory slot. Inventory slot. Now pick item. I'm going to delete it and put item. This is what's going to get all the code. Put it there. I'm going to come back here, fix everything here later. So inventory manager, I'm going to simply remove everything. I'll keep only this one. Let's move it up. Press alt and use the arrow key. You can move lines. I'm going to delete everything else. That. So if you have an item in your hand, remove it. And what I'm going to do basically is when I'm going to try to put an item in a inventory slot, the inventory slot will return an item or a null. So if you place an item and there's something, it will return the old item and keep the new. If it can't place the item that you're giving it, it will return it. So that's how I do that. We're going to have to get if we had an item for the offset var had item. So had item in hand, it's going to be one two in hand is not called no. So if we had something in your ha our hands, this will be set. Then we remove it so we can give it to the item slot. And if it takes it, it will add it to its cell. And if we don't remove it here, it's going to cause error. So what we'll do here is the item in hand will become what the slot will return. So slot uh, put item and we'll give it item in hand. So if we give it nothing, then it will put nothing inside of cell and return us the item that was in there. We have something, it will swap the two items. Now, if we have an item in our hand after this, then we want to add child to the item in hand node. So item in hand node, add child, item in hand. But then we need to set the offset to, if we had our hand empty, 
well, yeah, we could call it had empty hand. That's easier to understand. If you had empty hand, if the item in hand is null, then here, if had empty hand, then set the offset, which was the offset had before. Item, item offset is equal to event global position minus the plot rect global position. And the last thing we need to do is set the position of the item in hand, but this will also be used with the unstack splitted. So I'm going to quickly create a function for that. Let's call it set hand position and we'll give it the position of the event. So event global position. And create this function. Function set hand position. The position. If we have the item in hand, then we'll set item in hand. That red position is going to be equal to the position that I'm getting minus the item offset divided by the scale. Now the stack splitted need this. So set hand position and we'll give it the position of the slot, rec global position. Now let's go and take a look at the inventory slot. So put item. Let's clean that a bit. So I can remove this uh, setter I set earlier was for the test. Now this set item, I'm going to move this item equal new at the end and at the beginning here. Here, I'm going to check if the new item is null. If not new item, then I'm going to remove it. So item container dot remove, remove child, the item that we have already. Else, if we're ready, we'll add the new item and then we'll set it for the put item. It's going to be pretty much the same, except we'll be removing all the position and stuff. So if new item and then the equipment slot, I'm going to remove that. The item in hand node, like that. So if item, then if item, all the slot, we can remove them because we are in the slot. Item in hand becomes new item. If the new item is the same and the quantity is less than the max stack, let's stack the item. Item, new item. If the remainder is lower than one, we return no, because this put item will return an item and receive an item. There's not going to be a else case here, so we can delete those. So this else is if we click on an item that is different, we'll pick it up. So var temp item is equal to item. Let's remove all of that and let's add the new code. So item container will remove item that is already in. We'll set item to new item and then new item is equal to temp item and that's because right here we'll return the new item because that means that if we have quantity here and there is a remainder we'll return it with the, the remainder and here we keep the item that is in the slot in temporary then we remove the old item we set the new item and then the new item we set it to the temporary one and return it all right so then if there's no item in the slot already then we'll simply do set item and we'll return no we take the item and there's nothing left. and the last else is if we don't have a new item and we have an item already in here then that means that we just pick up the item what we do here so new item is equal to item set item with null and at the end return new item and there you go that should be good for that so if we come back in inventory manager we'll change this on item pick so we can validate these items instead of doing that we'll have here the item is equal to inventory add item the item because it could return something if not item if the item is null that means that it accepted the item then we will pick the item and return okay let's come back in the inventory slot and we'll add another function here to know if we can put something here so function try put item new item and this one will return a boolean and the only thing here is what condition do we need to have to be able to place an item so return so the new item is something and not item and there is no item in here or the item id is equal to the new item id well basically it's the this one here and let's put that in. so we accept item if the item here is null or if the item that we have here is the same as the one that you're passing in and there is still place in the stack then we'll accept so save that and now let's do the equipment slot so equipment slot this one will be able to remove pretty much everything so set item well this one is the same as the other item and it will, it will return item two we'll also have the function try put and this one will return oh so here to know if we can put an item in this slot we will return if the new 
item dot equipment i is equal to the type of the club. and the parent can put an item new item so if we try put in the parent and it works so in theory you could have weapon that has a quantity so you could replenish it something like that probably and then put item placeholder will be elsewhere at the end will return but the parent would and in here if new item so if we're giving it something if the new equipment type is not equal type then just for return the new item we don't want it and then we'll hide this here placeholder hide else that means that the new item is null then we'll simply placeholder that show because the slot will be empty and then we'll return the normal put item all right the last thing we need to change is in the inventory itself the bottom when we add the item we need to try put so for each slot if slot dot try put item and the item itself here it's going to test if it can put the item then if it can then do it item is want to s dot put item with the item then after that we check if not item that means that the item has been taken return null and at the end return item now if we would simply wait and return item at the end and not checking here it would place the item in every slot that it can find so as soon as the item has been placed then stop go away because if it plays an item that has quantity and it comes out with less quantity then it, it's going to try to put it in the next slot then when it's empty there is nothing more it's going to return all right so in theory that should work start let's try to put on the helmet all right helmet this is a gold coin it should go in our left pocket yes can't whip gold coin we can helmet anywhere else still working pretty nice all right now uh, one more thing i would like to add is the ability to drop your item on the ground because now if you pick your item and try to put it on the ground it doesn't do anything maybe you want to throw away some items to detect when you click on the void on not on a ui on or inventory slot what i do is i add in ui here a control and let's put it at the top and i'm gonna call this item void let's make it full rec so when you click on this with an item in your hand then this will catch it and send the appropriate signal to drop the item on the ground and since my inventory manager is here that's going to be the one that's going to listen to the click on him let's go at the top of the inventory manager i'm going to get the reference to the item void duplicate that item void save let's set it so inventory manager item void sign item void again okay so here in ready item void dot connect gy input on self and again on void gy input all right create a function for that we'll receive the event if event is input event mouse button and event press and event dot button index is equal to button left right so if you click with the left button on the item void then we'll send a signal with the signal manager dot emit signal and we'll call that item drop we'll send the item in hand so that's the item that we're dropping the item in hand is going to be null and we'll remove it. item in hand node remove child item in hand now we don't want the control to be always active because if you want to click on something else that is behind on your game world or something like that we want you don't want this to be activated so we'll change the mouse filter to be active only when you have an item in hand so we'll create a function for that set item void filter because it's going to be used at other places i'm going to go here under set item right there function set item void filter item void dot mouse filter is going to be equal to stop so we want to catch the clicks if there's an item in hand else it's going to be set to mouse filter ignore that's pretty much it stop if you have an item in hand if you don't ignore so this we can put it in the set hand position because it's going to be used by stacks created and when you pick an item and it's here also so when you drop your item that is in your hand it's going to deactivate itself now that we have this we need to create the signal item drop so go into signal manager add that here drop and we'll get an item from that now the player will listen to this so let's go to the troll and we'll have to add a function ready signal manager dot connect this new function item drop on self and we'll call on item drop if you drop an item then he will We'll listen to that on item drop function on item drop is the item itself so here we'll have to create a floor item and to do so i'm going to use the resource manager resource manager dot floor 
item dot instance. So let's create that here in the resource manager floor item is equal to reload. Let's go in my source interactable floor item TSEN. Go in there, remove old one, save this floor item instance. Then floor item dot item is equal to the item that I'm dropping on the ground and put it on the ground. So get parent, add child floor item, and the position will be the same as the player. Position is equal to position. All right. So if we try that, let's move to the helmet, pick it up, drop it on the ground. It works. Take the gold coin, drop it. Next, let's add a interactable chest. I'm going to go in my interactable folders, right click. I'm going to do a new scene, interactable chest. It's going to be a 2D scene. Then the base of this will be pretty much the same as the floor item. Change the type for the area. I'm going to add a sprite first. So let's go in the center here. I'm going to import my chest sprite, right? Re-import 2D sprite texture chest. And now if I add a collision polygon 2D, so this one, I can draw myself the collision. So do it like this, approximately something like this seems right. Then you can move the points. If you have a 3D game, you would have your mesh inside here, your collision too. And that would be pretty much the same, but in 3D. Oh yeah, but this is, I mixed the two collision. First, I need a static body 2D. This is going to be the collision for the static body 2D. This one will have a normal collision. This collision goes for the interact zone. So let's do a capsule again. Let's move it in front of right so I can see it. Press E to rotate. Let's put it in the same, same orientation of the chest. Q to get the mouse back. That should do the job. So then interactable. All right, let's add a script. Interactable chest area 2D create. This is going to be pretty much the same as the button. So if I go to my main scene, so those buttons are going to be the chest. So if I go in the script for those, I can pick everything, copy, interact the chest, pretty much everything except the top part and area 2D. So it's telling me that a chest already exists. So I could delete my buttons. So yeah, this one, delete chest. Yes, remove. So I remove the script from the chest and this one should, should be happy. Uh, I'm going to add a space, save. Remove the space, save, and he's happy now. So in here, the unchest rest, this is going to be interact. I will need the action. So var action is going to be open. And I'm going to need the object name. I could set it as chest here in ready. Object name is equal in the neutrino. Now, the only thing different about the chest is it's not going to have a picked item function. It's going to have a out of range. So if the player gets away from the chest, it should close itself. I'm going to have to add a variable in inventory. So if inventory dot is open, then emit the signal. Signal manager dot emit signal inventory, inventory closed. And I'm going to send this inventory. So let's add this variable first in inventory. Let's go to the top here under slots var is open is equal to false. So we have the is open and then we need the inventory close signal. So let's go in signal manager, inventory opened. Let's add another one. It's going to be inventory closed. Then we can go in the inventory container. This one listen to the inventory open. I'm going to also listen to inventory closed and I'm going to create a function on inventory closed. So here let's create another function. So here, when you open the inventory, the inventory will be set as open is open is equal to true. Then let's create a function on inventory closed inventory. So let's set the inventory is open as false. We can say that it's an inventory. Then we need to remove this inventory inventory container, remove child inventory current inventory now we need to remove this from the array of inventories we need the index current inventories find inventory it will find the index and then remove then we need to change the y value so we can get this lines here and only do minus it will remove the size of this inventory and the last thing is if the size of the current inventory is zero then we can simply close so hide there's nothing to display then in the close function here we can set them to not open so is open is false all right save that the only thing we have left is to know when we are out of range so in the player code when we exit the area we need to check if the current interactable has method out of range out of range Spring, then if it has, then you just call it. So let's duplicate that and remove that part. There, current interactable out of frame. First, we will need to place the chest in the world. And I'm going to do the random chest too. So if we go back in my main, I have my chest that I can remove now. And we have the random chest that has 
random stuff in it. So this one, I'll, I'll make it a chest too. So I'm going to go in the code. I'm going to copy everything. I'm going to go back in my interactable. I need to save my chest here. I'm going to right click on my interactable chest and new inherited scene. So it's the same chest, but I'm going to remove the script, create a new one, random chest and create here. I'm going to paste all of this, save that one in interactable, random chest, save that. If I go back in my resource, can delete the chest RNG, delete. Yes, in my main, back there and delete my second chest button, delete. So I have no more chest there. Let's go in the dungeon. Now that we're here, interactable, I'm going to select the walls and I'm going to place the chest and the random chest. So first one, let's place five item in there, normal chest, and it's going to contain three items. Item, magic orb, wood, and a stone brick, all right? And the second one is going to be random cool chest size. Let's make it 10, place some random stuff in there. Okay, so everything is set in the chest. So let's see if this works. I've set everything in the chest, but I need to go back in my chest to set the collision. So collision, the mask for, and remove the red. Now, since I changed the normal chest, the random chest should be changed to random chest collision. It is. All right. Oh, and you need to make sure that the item void is mouse ignore at the start of the game because if you don't when you're going to start the game if you click it's going to try to drop something null and it's going to crash i did set the collision of the first chest but the second one here since it was already here i guess it didn't update its layer set it manually if i add another one wall directable random chest so its layer are set but because it was already placed it didn't update itself something to note and let's start the game so let's see i can pick up my item E to pick up a helmet, press E to pick up gold coin, press E to open normal chest. And I have three items. All right, I can move out and it close. I can open this one, random chest, but there's nothing in it. Oh, yeah, there's nothing in it because I didn't set the quality of item I wanted. So, number of items, let's let's fill it 10, right? Let's go back to the chest, open it, and then it's full with, a, with two crystal. So, now that when you insert an item, it will try to stack if possible, then now those items are stacking, and yeah, you can drop stuff on the ground and if you don't have anything in your slots we'll equip it all right so that covers everything i wanted to add so if you have your game you can do pretty much the same and you should be able to have a nice inventory system pretty pretty easily if you have any questions or suggestion or anything you can ask in the comments below if you have more complicated question you can come on the discord to ask them i'll be happy to help you. i'm gonna start working on the next part which is gonna be the item rarity and usable item and maybe other features if you are interested in in those i want to update also the code for the mouse over because when you mouse over something if the inventory closes the item info stays there because it didn't fire the the mouse exit function so that's a problem and there's also the fact that if you place an item you don't see it until you go out and go back in so i might make my own function for that but it still needs some work so i'm not i will have to work a bit more on it i'm still learning too. all right so i hope i didn't forget anything thanks for watching and i'll see you next time see ya